are healthcare providers, friends, family, and let's face it, billboards, advertisement, clothing campaigns, and the celebrities we follow on Instagram all stress the importance of regular exercise and physical activity. We harp on the benefits, be it your heart health, joint health, mood, and of course, toning the muscles for that upcoming class reunion. And these things are all true. I'm one of those healthcare providers that stresses the importance of moving your body. But here's a key part of the equation that a lot of these people don't or can't counsel us about. And that's how to take care of your body during recovery. It's great that we can get out there and push ourselves to the limits for a workout. But if it takes you a week or more to recover from that workout, what good is that doing? In this video, I'm going to go through some nutritional, lifestyle, and supplementation tips so you can recover properly from your chosen exercise and be sure to optimize the potential for your next workout. Whether you're a beginner, just getting into a routine, or you're training for your second half marathon, you can always use a reminder of the basics of taking care of your body. Dr. Tiffany Zugan. I'm a naturopathic doctor in the GTA and a member of the Vitamar educational team. Before I became a naturopathic doctor, I was a licensed kinesiologist and personal trainer. Using this unique sports medicine background combined with my nutritional and supplementation expertise, I'm going to give you the tools you need to recover properly from your workouts and help you progress even faster towards your exercise goals. All right, I know what you're all thinking. Boring. Recovery is for the 70 something who's having difficulty climbing the stairs. But the fact is the more active you are, the more your body will actually benefit from workout recovery. And when I say this, I don't mean rest. I mean, actively focusing on making your body most optimally benefit from the workout and the time between. Sometimes recovery can include an easier exercise bout between high intensity days. Your body will naturally, of course, recover from a bout of exercise. In fact, it takes about 48 hours to recover from a workout. There are ways for us to shorten that window though and make sure the next workout is still impactful. This is the key when we're working towards any goal. So whether you're a weekend warrior, trained athlete, or an active person, you will benefit from the techniques I'm about to talk about. We're gonna to touch on the nutrition related to optimizing workouts and recovery. We're gonna discuss some lifestyle factors. And finally, we'll touch on supplementation, including protein shakes and pre and post workout supplements. The whole nutrition thing is a big conversation. There's absolutely too much to cram into this YouTube video. However, I will highlight some key rules to keep in mind for fueling related to exercise and recovery. So in my opinion, there are three incredibly important components to this process. Can you guess what they might be? The first is hydration. I'm going to keep you guessing for a minute and reveal the other two as we go. Hydration is super, super important. Actually, not just for exercise recovery, but in general for wellness. There's a simple equation to learn how much water you should be drinking in a day. Think of your weight in pounds, then divide it by two. This is the number of ounces you should be drinking per day. Okay, so the average size adult might be in and around the two liter mark when you do that. Now, this is the amount you should be drinking just on a daily basis if you were a couch potato. No consideration for exercise. When you exercise, you sweat and you need to replenish, which means drinking even more. If we look at athletes, one to 2% of their body weight is lost during a workout. And this is typical. This is water weight. If they lose more or less than this, they aren't drinking enough. It's pretty simple. If you're not drinking enough, your body doesn't want to let go of more water. One kilogram of weight loss is equal to one liter of sweat. The interesting thing is your body will actually continue to lose more water post exercise. So over the next few hours, you need to take in one and a half times the amount you've lost during that workout. Most of us are not those elite athletes tracking our fluid loss with workouts or losing a kilogram in sweat but it paints the extreme picture of what happens on a smaller scale when we non-pro athletes exercise. I can't stress the importance of this enough. We must, must, must rehydrate after exercise to make sure our muscles are ready for the next workout. And I know what you're thinking, does it have to be water? The fact is the majority of us who are just active people and not elite athletes 
will be fine with just water. We don't generally need the carb drinks or electrolytes after the average 30 minute cardio workout. With that said, there's definitely a time and place for electrolytes and Gatorade. As I said, the nutrition conversation could go on all day. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my recipe for a homemade electrolyte drink that you can have after a workout. So stay tuned for that. All right, I think I drove the point home about hydration. Remember there are those other two key factors I mentioned? The next one is sleep. Sleep is our body's core recovery time. That's the true time where all the energy is spent recovering and refueling. Sleep is so critical for recovery. Now this is a big topic, similar to nutrition, but the main point is give yourself enough time to have adequate sleep between your workouts. Sleeping and eating is the body's natural way. To piggyback on this point, there are other lifestyle things we'll talk about later in this video that independently help recovery, but also help with sleep. So it's a double whammy impact. More on this in a bit. Okay, the third key thing I believe is beyond critical is protein. Protein is the building block of your muscle. If you don't adequately fuel with protein, your recovery is greatly hindered. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, recovery from a workout takes about 48 hours. However, with proper fueling after a workout, we can actually reduce that recovery window to 18 hours. It's a massive difference. Now, it's not just protein that does this, but what I see most often in practice is that patients generally don't eat enough protein in general. And then when we exercise, we need even more and we need it timed properly. As a general rule to know how much protein you should be eating, I want you to think of your weight in kilograms. It's that number in grams you should be eating every day. So let's say you're an active young female, 130-ish pounds, roughly 60 kilograms. That means you need about 60 grams of protein per day just to maintain your daily function. When we exercise, we demand even more resources. So for perspective, that 60 grams is about two good sized chicken breasts. It's a lot, right? If you're a male about 175 pounds or 80 kilograms, it means you need almost three chicken breasts. Crazy, right? So in addition to this, after a workout, we can optimize our nutrient intake too. The optimal meal or shake post-workout has protein and carbs. We want about 0.3 grams per kilogram body weight of protein post-workout, and we want about a four to one ratio of carbs to protein. So let's say on average, we want about 25 grams of protein and 100 grams of carbs. Now let's say you wait until after two hours post-workout to have this meal. At this point, it will take your body 48 hours to replenish the stores using that meal. However, if we can get those carbs and protein in right away after the workout, within 30 minutes, for example, we capitalize on the body trying to pull in all these resources and re reduces the time it takes to replenish those stores to about 20 hours. Pretty cool, right? The other thing I wanna mention here about post-workout refueling is the carb thing. Technically here, the actual type of carb doesn't matter, but I am a naturopath. So I would advise you to choose a fruit or veggie as your carb. We could also go on all day about the types of protein you should be choosing. In short, whey protein is the fastest into the bloodstream and the best for muscle protein building. After this, soy would be the next best, then casein, another milk protein. That said, whey is not for you if you can't tolerate dairy and because it's fast into the bloodstream, it's also a poor choice if you struggle with high blood sugar. We wanna also choose a protein with high amounts of leucine as this is a trigger for muscle building too. The last note I wanna make about nutrition is that eating regular meals is also in itself recovery. So we harp on the whole fueling after a workout thing, but the first focus should really be proper nutrition throughout the day and we nuance with the nutrient timing around exercise. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is hydrotherapy, which means treatment with water. Contrast hydrotherapy, or alternating hot and cold water application, is an awesome way to improve recovery. We've all seen the videos of the athletes dunking into the ice baths, right? It lowers the temperature of the muscle to decrease the inflammatory response, and decreases muscle damage. Also helps with cooling the core temperature. And this is what I was alluding to earlier. We cool the core temperature 
and sleep improves. So not only is the hydrotherapy a good way to help the muscle recovery in itself, but also helps with recovery indirectly by promoting better rest. How can we do this at home? Don't go out and buy an ice bath. We can easily do this in the shower and it's much less harsh. Alternate the warmest water you can tolerate and the coolest you can tolerate. You can cycle through three to five times and you always need to end on cold. I know, not ideal in the winter. When you're doing this, you wanna aim for a three to one ratio of hot to cold. So if you can only tolerate 10 seconds of cold, you do 30 seconds of hot. 30 seconds of cold would mean 90 seconds of hot. You get the idea. This does take some getting used to, but most of my patients who do this post-exercise have grown to love it. Okay, now let's talk supplements. First, I wanna highlight a couple of brands that have clean lines for athletes. If you're competing and you're being tested for substances, you need to be careful what you take because there can be traces of things in certain supplements. Thorne and Douglas Labs both have clean lines for athletes. Now for the fun stuff. For recovery, I almost always recommend magnesium. It's great for preventing muscle cramps and reducing delayed onset muscle soreness. It's also a common deficiency. I love the Canprev Magnesium Visglycinate 200 Gentle. It's well-dosed, well-priced, and easy on the gut. It also comes as capsules or powders, and some of the powders taste really great. Creatine could be another supplement worth including. The research indicates it's mostly beneficial for body composition and strength. For those that don't know, body composition is your distribution of lean mass and fat mass. So when we try to improve body composition, it usually means adding muscle and losing fat. Creatine, you could consider doing five grams per day, which is about one scoop. The other thing we could consider is ashwagandha. Some research indicates it can improve strength and reduce muscle damage, as well as increase muscle size. For some of you, this will be desirable, for some, not so much. However, this would be mostly in untrained people. So if you're relatively in shape and it's unlikely you're gonna get a huge boost in performance from ashwagandha. It is, however, also a wonderful herb for stress buffering. And keep in mind here that stress can be mental and physical. When we're working out and pushing our body, our body experiences stress too. So ashwagandha could be a nice addition. I typically recommend the AOR Ganda 600. The last thing I wanna discuss is pre-workout. They are all the rage in certain exercise communities. These often have a combination of things, but almost always include caffeine. Now, caffeine actually does increase the ability to expend energy, so you might get a couple extra reps at the gym. The research also shows that it decreases feelings of fatigue and increases alertness. It does seem to have a positive influence on muscle endurance and mood. However, a lot of the safety data on this stuff only goes about eight weeks, and there are some negative effects of caffeine too. For example, if you struggle with anxiety, stay away from these pre-workouts. All right, everyone, thanks for sticking with me. Just to recap what we talked about, remember to hydrate, 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 sleep well, and eat nutritious meals. We can dose protein and carbs immediately after exercise to shorten our recovery time and try contrast showers too. Lastly, we touched on some supplements to consider like magnesium, creatine, and ashwagandha. I'm so excited for all of you to get out there and apply these recovery enhancers to get you to your goals even faster. Tell us in the comments what you're working towards. Is it a half marathon, a specific weight deadlifted, a time goal for your 20 kilometer bike ride? We're so happy to help get you there. Again, I'm Dr. Tiffany Zugin. I'm a naturopathic doctor and a member of the Vitamar educational team. Thanks for watching and stay active and stay tuned for my electrolyte recipe.